we're talking to the human givens. Thank you to Tiffany and to Judith for coming in. You're from the, the human givens. I do not know much about you as a group. So tell me, uh, Judith, what, what, are, what are the human givens? Right. So the human givens is actually an approach to psychological therapy. So sort of psychology and counselling and psychotherapy. Um, it's actually not a model as such. It's bigger than that is how I like to think about it. So Tiffany and I are both trained as human givens therapists. Right. And we have our own um, private businesses using this approach. Um, so in simple terms, and I've got my little crib sheet here, is based on as human beings, we come into the world with a set of emotional needs. And those needs, along with the resources we have to get those needs met, is what's called the human givens. So that's a very simple <laughs> way of right. putting it. OK. Um, and then we'll talk through what those needs are in a minute, if that would be helpful. Of course, yes. Yeah. So whereabouts are you based then? So Judith I'm based yourself? in Bridgewater in Somerset. Right. Um, and Tiffany? And I'm based in Ilminster and Street. Fantastic. OK, so spreading across the middle bits of Somerset here. Yes. Lovely. Yes. Uh, let's find out then those needs that you mentioned. So uh, tell us a bit about what, what we need. What are these emotional needs we come into the world with? OK, well, I think everyone sort of knows the, the, the physical needs that we have um, for sort of shelter, for food, for warmth. Um, but there's also emotional needs, and we sort of round them up to about nine of them. Mm -hmm. um, so the need for security, to know that where your work or your environment or your home is secure. Um, the need for attention, to give and receive attention to people is very important. Um, and the need to feel a sense of control and autonomy in your life as well. Um, you know, you could be maybe going to lose your job and you, you know, feel out of control and you can't control those circumstances, so things like that. Mm -hmm. um, OK, and uh, interesting, you said those. I mean, something's very topical at the moment. Those three, I was just aware, people that are being flooded, sadly. You yeah. think about the emotional impact that's having and you look at this in relation to people's needs, all of those things they've lost control of. Mm, it's hard to look at some of those Which, of course, is going to impact on images, people's mental health. Yeah. Um, community, again, is sort of being connected to a wider community. Um, so we were quite interested when you said about a yoga teacher coming in because we're both into yoga. So, right. so going to a yoga well, class stick around. Or, or, or actually having something. I mean, I, I'm part of a choir and that's fantastic for my mental health, actually going and singing once a week. So that's how I get that emotional need met. And I do a lot of sport. But yeah. if you're thinking about the flood victims at the moment, then the community literally is going to pull together for them like they did here in Somerset, mm -hmm. you know, four or five years ago. Um, and then really you, you get a sense of being and belonging to somewhere where there's a lot of young people who don't feel they belong. And so they get their belonging from gangs and things like that, which mm -hmm. is how they sure. sort of seem to yes. go into that. So we've got a need for community, um, um, a need for intimacy, um, to be with somebody who sort of accepts you, <laughs> warts and all, so <laughs> yes. to speak, you know, for whatever you can give. Um, and a need for status as well, to be valued, to be good at something and for people to recognise that. And the interesting thing about the, the status as well, it's not necessarily about where you are. So you could have a CEO of a last, large organisation their status may be perceived to be high, but it's how they perceive it sometimes. Right. So somebody can have, you may, there's a term imposter syndrome where people actually mm. have the high status, but they don't actually they think they're going to be caught out. I think we've all been so, there, haven't we? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, so, and you, you, I quite often see comments of, well, how, you know, someone comes out and says they're depressed or mm, something, mm. And, and someone will reply, so, well, how can you be mm. depressed? You've there got you you've got it all, haven't you? And so actually, it, yes. it doesn't matter exactly. about other things. It's how you, yeah, you so, feel. And the last three, um, sort of a sense of achievement, so competence, so feeling. So that ties in a little bit, moves on from status a little bit, really. So feeling that you've achieved something and feeling competent in your abilities. Um, another one is actually a need for privacy, and that's opportunity to reflect and actually consolidate your experience and time to yourself. Um, and when I work with clients as well, I'm always, when I talk about these, actually just being aware that for some people it's not as important as other things. So somebody might actually like their own, per their own company and be quite happy living on their own, not seeing many people. And the next person might think, actually, this isn't working for me. Mm. And that becomes a bigger unmet need for them. So it's a very individual thing. Um, and the last one is meaning and purpose. So having a sense of, you know, what we're on this life planet for, yeah. what we're doing, what we're offering. A reason to get up in the morning, <laughs> yes. um, you know, to feel um, more stretched in what you do, to enjoy what you're doing, um, but feel like you're achieving something. Whereas um, some people are feeling very stressed at the moment and there's a big difference in the effect it has on the, mm. on the human system to being right. stretched and stressed. Yeah. Gosh, so so, so those are the nine needs. You can make, does it make sense mm. now hearing, hearing Oh, yeah, that? yeah, yes. it does. And that's a lot of, of things, actually, isn't mm. it, really, mm. to try and strike this balance. And mm. you, you mentioned, Judith, about some people needing 
a lot of one thing and maybe not so much of another. So yes. everyone's got their own mm. kind of way of, of, yes. of needing yes. and, of these things. Yeah. And I suppose that's your job, isn't it, for people who feel imbalanced? Yes. About yes. So, so the basis of the human up. givens approach is actually acknowledging that we have these emotional needs. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we have of, when we work with our clients, and now you, we both use questionnaires as, as well as conversation, is to see what, what needs aren't being met. And it's about getting these needs met in balance. Yeah. Right. So we would get them to scale them, wouldn't we, yeah. potentially? Because you don't really want them to be a control freak. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You don't want them to be an intention seeker to the no. extreme. So that it needs to be in balance. And, you know, anybody could suffer mental health distress if these aren't in balance for them. So, you know, it only takes you maybe to lose your job or maybe you get divorced at the same time. And, you know, you can see why homelessness takes place or, you know, mental health, you know, is seriously affected. Yeah. So. Um, they're really important, but probably underestimated. Mm. Well, I think it's fascinating. Thank you for going through all of those. What I want to do is talk about um, perhaps where we are at the moment with mental health. It certainly seems to be being talked about a bit more, but mm. there, I'm sure there. That's also there's more cases of it, therefore coming to people like you and to the NHS as well. Uh, and I also want to find out about your own journeys with the human givens and how mm. you found them. So that's okay. all to come here on BBC Somerset with Tiffany and Judith talking about the human givens approach uh, to mental health. It is 24 minutes to eight o'clock. Good evening. If you are just joining us, this is Connected. Uh, it's a Wednesday night, which means that it's health and wellbeing night. I'm very pleased to say that I'm joined by Judith and by Tiffany, who are, do you call yourself human givens? Human givens therapists. Therapists <laughs> who work within human givens as a, as a model. So you were telling us earlier on about some of the needs that we have as humans, not physical needs, but uh, mental. Uh, emotional guess, needs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Emotional needs. That's the, that's the way to say it. Um, but nature, although these things are really important, nature has given us a way or several ways of, of trying to achieve these. And just to quickly run through those who missed it, things like uh, needing some kind of attention, uh, control, intimacy, privacy, achievement, meaning, purpose, all these things. Yeah. Not to go through them all again, but that's, that's just an example of them. What sorts of things within the human givens do you work with? with to to say that actually we do have ways of dealing hmm. and, and improving okay our, so our looking lives. at some of the resources we have um our memory and particularly our long-term memory so that's something and when you're working with trauma particularly and also with anxiety that is the case where we can unfortunately misuse our resources but the memory you know being able to tap into things from the past but you know using that therapeutically to use previous experiences that have taken place mm. Um, can be uh, positive and negative mm. um, depending on the situation and the perspective that they've taken. And a lot of people have very good imaginations. Yes. Um, their, their right brain um, is really imaginative and they can almost talk themselves or think themselves into a problem. Um, but the good thing is that generally people who are very creative and very imaginative can also get themselves out of it yes. quite quickly as well. Okay. So there's benefits again uh, and not yeah. so good. So it's curiosity and imagination as a, as a resource that we have. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the ability to understand the world through metaphor and stories. Um, and I know you're going to come on to this in a minute, but that was one of the things that, that drew me into actually doing the whole training in the first place. Right. So I'll talk a bit more about that later. Um, it's interesting because you have quite a few storytellers on this programme, <laughs> <because laughs> which we love because yes. they're, they're so, you know, they just are able to sum up these great lessons of Absolutely. life in, in these fantastic stories. And that ties in, of course, we have a brain that dreams and our, bra our dreams are metaphors from things that have you know, emotionally aroused us in mm. the day. And our, our brain naturally creates stories for us out of that. And we can use you know, the, that part of how the, human, how, the, how the human brain works to actually help people. Yeah. We're going um, into our dream therapy now. I love the sound <laughs> of that. Do you know what? That's I was away in Wales at the weekend. I don't know what was going on. Was the air up in Wales or something? Some very curious dreams, including I interviewed Jennifer Lopez here on this programme, which oh, was that's quite a good dream, that. <laughs> quite a good dream. Well, this is radio. No one could see that you were, you've got lookalikes here. Yeah, well, <laughs> right. exactly. It must have just been a fore <laughs> foresight for this. Um, and I mean, then the others are <laughs> the observing self, which basically in plain English means the ability to step back and look at things from a different perspective, from right. an alternative yeah. perspective. Which some people find really difficult when they're highly um, anxious or very depressed. It's very hard for them to step back and see things from a different perspective. We often say they can't see the woods from the trees, mm. that kind of thing. So it's, it's, a, it's a resource we have that, again, can be misused um, in times of stress. Yeah, it's, it yeah. can be really difficult yes. to see a big picture, can't it? And then it, the other two, ability something. to emphasize and connect with others, which, of course, ties in with the emotional needs that we talked about. Mm. And we also have the ability to think rational thinking, to think clearly. Yeah. And one of the things we're also aware of is when people are emotionally aroused, they, they don't think clearly because that part of the brain is disengaged. Mm. 
Um, really interesting. That, yeah. And so using those, you can help to cr restore balance. Yes. Yeah. And together, the, the needs and the resources is what we call the human givens. Wow. So that's where that comes from. Well, this is a really interesting thing, mm. something that I knew nothing about up until this evening. So how did you... You mentioned there about the stories that got you yes. involved, Judith. So tell me, how, when did you come across the human Well, givens? I actually originally trained as a mental health nurse, and I'm still registered as a mental health nurse. Um, so this is going... It shows my age, so we're going back over 20 years ago, right. and I was working in a young people's unit. And despite having my mental health nursing skills, I didn't know that I had the skills to work with the young people and that whether I was saying and doing the right things. And I discovered, I mean, the, the Human Givens has trained through what's called the Human Givens College now. It was a different organisation then. And they had, like, one-day training. And the first one I went on was just how to do effective counselling. And at that time, I was a nurse. I had no intention of doing counselling. And I've told this story so many times, but basically the young people I was working with, they had psychotherapists, counsellors, whatever they wanted to call themselves, and they came in and the kids are very distressed after they'd seen them, and they'd use all the language, a psychobabble, right. that we'd, I didn't understand. <laughs> and what I like about the Human Givens approach is we use a lot of plain English, you know, so it, mm. we, if there's a bit of jargon, I'll explain it, but I don't, we don't tend to use jargon. And then from that first day, I did another course, which was how to tell stories that heal, and that was the thing that, because we use storytelling as, in our therapy as well. Right. I didn't, we didn't mention that. Great. So that's what kind of drew me into it. And that was purely because of my background, my family, parents from the Caribbean, and storytelling is a rich part of our culture. And my mum told stories, and we've always used that. And then to be told, actually, you can do that to help somebody. And that's part of who I am, mm. my personality. That's what kind of led me down to where I am now. Oh, it's kind of mixing all different bits of you, <laughs> the mental health side and then yes. your, your background as yes. you know, storytelling mm. in your family. Great. Mm. Well, it's all come to this point. It's like <laughs> fate, uh, <laughs> destiny or whatever they call it. Well, that's brilliant. And for you, is it a, a similar story, Tiffany? Uh, no, um, I basically did a psychology degree and I had to say it was all very theoretical and none of it really seemed to make all that much sense to me. And I wanted to help people. Um, so I got into quite a lot of animal assisted therapy work. Um, so the value of equine assisted therapy as well as dogs and pat dogs that go into hospitals and things like that but to give it credibility to say how great animals were I thought I needed something on the mental health side to get to help the credibility factor and um, I ended up volunteering for a charity called Promise Work. So I think I've been in here. They're a great charity that mentor young people that have been in care for at least two years and help them give them st stability. And um, their training was just, I was thinking, where are you getting all this from? This is nothing like the psychology degree I've done or anything like that. And um, they said, oh, this is human givens. So I thought, oh, this made total sense. It was really practical, solution-focused. It was based on neuroscience, how the brain works, why it works. And I just thought, this is the kind of thing for me. Um, people don't have to be in long-term therapy. Mm -hmm. They don't have to be distressed when they come out of a session. Which <laughs> Judith was just saying, you know, it's happened. And, um, and I just, like, jumped on it and just went, yeah, it, it, it totally it, it got it. A bit of science in there, a bit of how the brain works. What makes sense? Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So mm -hmm. joined up and, and away we went. Yeah. It's interesting hearing you say all that stuff about neuroscience and how the brain works and all that, but actually, uh, Judith is saying it's plain English. It's, it's, yes. it's understandable, yes. Yes. even though it's complicated. Yeah. It's, it's re and, and you've I've, got a sort yes. of crib sheet here yes. that's really easy and to I understand. And I work with children as well, and I've explained some of this to a child as young as four. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. they've got it. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And also, I think my oldest client's probably been in their 80s. <laughs> so... Uh. And they've got it. <laughs> and the trauma therapy for this is so quick and, 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 and easy that, you know, it's so, it's so nice to have a, someone to walk in having PTSD and then to walk out and come back two weeks later and feel so much better. Um, yeah, it's, it's just, it's just a nice Because what really. we're doing, we're teaching people skills. We're teaching them mm. how to use their resources. So the imagination that they might have been misusing... We actually teach them how to use that imagination in a positive way. So we do relaxation, guided imagery, and that will actually help to lower their emotional arousal and they can think clearly. Brilliant. So oh. that's one part of it. Well, <laughs> okay. I want to come on and talk about that sort of thing, really, mm. the sorts of people and, and their issues. Obviously, no, we don't want to go into personal no. details here, but just, the, just a general kind of idea of, of the sorts of things that you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis and the help you can offer them. So <laughs> that is on the way here on BBC Somerset. We're talking uh, to Judith and Tiffany, who are uh, human-given therapists, Tiffany and Judith, who uh, 
uh, Judith, you're based in Bridgewater. Tiffany, uh, Ilminster and Street is, is where your therapies take place. So uh, we found out a bit about how Human Givens works and the, the thoughts behind it. So for you uh, at the moment, you've both been in it 10 or more years. Um, what sorts of things at the moment, have you seen differences? Are there almost trends is the wrong word, but do you see maybe people come to you a lot about one thing and then there's, I don't know, a famous person talks about something else and others come in and talk to you about it? Um, at the moment, um, because we work for a charity, PTSD Resolution, we do get quite a few trauma uh, clients through. Um, but basically, we're looking at anxiety, uh, depression, mm -hmm. and anger. You know, right. they, for me, are the sort of the, the four main topics that I, I don't know about you, Judith. But Same, and also um, relationship issues, and in some cases, sort of the, the aftermath of, of kind of abusive situations, right. if I put it. Yeah, so vaguely. you're with people in very <laughs> tough situations mm. where they've been through something horrible or, or are currently going through something mm. horrible. Um, wh what is it like when someone first comes to you and sits down and, or, or I don't know, speaks to you for the first time? Is that, I don't know, I guess it's very difficult for them to make that step, really, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I mean, the first step, I mean, interestingly, I had somebody ring me today as a new inquiry. So that is the first step, mm. actually, is picking up that phone. Um, talking about trends, what I'm finding is people are less picking up phone, they're more likely to text mm. you or email you, which is fine. But actually having that phone call I find really helpful because we, the first step in therapy is building rapport. Because you, bear in mind you've got a complete stranger you've just walked into the room to meet and you're expected to tell them some really difficult stuff. So the first step is actually to actually put them at ease. And from my perspective, that phone call or that contact initially is that beginning of therapy even before they before I've met them. So it is actually putting them at ease. Yeah. The small talk bit <laughs> really yeah. is where you'd start. Well, you could make or break a relationship on the phone, couldn't you? Absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of pressure on you as well as yes. the, the person. I mean, the phone up. is basically briefly, you know, they might want to know a bit about what we do. Um, they have a brief overview of what the issues are. A lot of time people actually say, no, I'll tell you when I see you. And that's fine, because they don't want to go into it all on the phone, actually. They just want to kind of know that we can actually do something to help, yeah. uh, basically. It, it must be very yeah. fulfilling for you to see someone come and, and sit with, with some really serious issues, mm. and then actually you're able to, to help them uh, and see that improvement over, I don't know, a course of weeks. Yeah, and Charlie, the really nice thing about this type of therapy is if they've been through something really traumatic, they don't actually have to tell us what it is. Absolutely. A lot of yeah. therapies, like talking therapies, will want to sort of re relive it almost. And, and for us, that sort of can re-traumatise the mm. person as they're actually retelling the story. Um, but the type of therapy work we do for trauma, they don't have to say anything at all. So um, they just need to follow a set of instructions that we're obviously giving them. And that will be enough for them to be able to hopefully get over the trauma in a pretty good session or right. two. And so. what would a typical session look like? A, is it a, a discussion you both seated? I, I don't know how, how else it might work out. Is that generally how it looks? <laughs> it depends on your client. <laughs> right. yes, Sometimes if you have younger people, um, I've had um, a young lad who um, was not interested at all about being sitting down and we actually went fishing. Right. So, you know, um, you sort of got to go with what they want to do. Yes. And if they want to go for a walk or they want to bring their dog in or whatever works for them, um, it's about making them comfortable um, and then giving them information and normalising what's going yes. on. Mm. Um, and they're not going crazy and they're not mad for thinking this. But you explain what their needs are and not being met and you explain the resources maybe not being used appropriately. And this is what's happened. And then we just get them back on track mm. and mm. they can see that there's a reason for it. It's not just, you know, they were born depressed or they were born <laughs> anxious. Because mm. people just, aren't, Because are they? they're not. No. You know, no. it's not a biological illness. It's an environmental. So no. um, once they can see that and they just need to re-change and restructure the environment yes. around them and how they perceive yes. it, um, away they go. Really? Which is and really, think really nice. If I can, you know, first session they can come away thinking that or knowing that they're not going crazy and you can normalise it, as Tiffany's just said, then we've achieved something. Yeah. I mean, the f initial session would be a lot of, sort of information gathering and um, the model, so it's not a big secret. So the first thing we do is a rapport building. That's really important, as I meant, just mentioned. Gathering some really useful information. So quality information, not just, you know, what your neighbour's dog is, unless that's relevant to, the, to solving the problem. But okay, a lot of people would get stressed by their neighbour's <laughs> yeah. dogs, though. Yeah. But they might, sometimes I, I might be asking some, some questions, they think, oh, why did she ask me that? But they, it comes together. 
as to why, and we then be looking at what their resources are, so thinking back to our human givens. So if somebody said, actually, I mean, yoga seems to be the theme of the evening, so if they did yoga, or perhaps they used to run, both Tiffany and I run, by the way, so if they run, or if they do some sort of exercise, and, they, and quite often, particularly with depression, people stop doing those things that they enjoyed. So it's about being aware of those and getting them to re-engage with things that they enjoyed, which can be really tricky. Mm. Um, we also s get them to set a goal. So that's a really important aspect mm -hmm. of therapy is actually what do you want to be different in your life? And there's lots of different ways of asking that question, isn't yeah. there? But the so important part is the brain can't get to something it can't see. So mm -hmm. if you have a goal written down or at least visualised your goal, then the brain has much more of an idea how to get there and what it's going yeah, to. Right. So there's a reason for that. And, you know, people are, are good at things and they forget that they're good at things. Mm -hmm. and, you know, people come in with exam stress or, you know, they failed their maths exam three times, but they may have passed their driving test. So they can operate under exam conditions, but they've just got wrapped up in the, the, the maths that's gone wrong. And you can rehearse and remember that actually you can operate under exam stress. So, you know, it's still there. You still have the resource to do that. And so with the client, with those that sort of example, what you would get them to do is to actually recall that emotion around yeah. passing that test, that exam, and then put that into the rehearsal of something like the maths test. Or, the maths yeah. test. Yeah. Because yeah. they can do it. You don't mean it. So it's, it's actually accessing their resources and then utilising those. And then it brings a bit of guided really. imagery. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if you watch sport, but you've got Owen Farrell, who's a classic for rugby kicking the, the ball. He is literally, his eyes are watching from the ball through the goalpost where he's going to kick. And he would have rehearsed that in his head thousands of times, you know, every scenario going, you know, whether the wind or the crowd or the conditions. He'll know exactly what to, so his brain will have no surprises. And that's exactly what we're getting our clients yes. to do. It's the same thing. And I think a key thing with talking about rehearsal is we get good at what we rehearse. So if you yeah. play a musical instrument, if you sing, if you dance, whatever it is you do, you get better at it by practicing it. And the same goes with our mental health. So if we spend all of our time talking about why we're depressed or why we're anxious or why we're feeling in the way we're feeling and it's negative, and we go into a therapist that encourages us to do all that stuff, we're going to get good at being depressed. We're going to get good at being anxious. We do the opposite. We get them to focus out and to look at their goals and what they want to be, what they're good at, and then get them to rehearse that. Right. <laughs> so that's what we do. Definitely. I see. It mm. all makes sense. Mm. Right, it's been really lovely mm. speaking to you both. Tiffany, I've got a burning question. How did the fishing go? Did you did you <laughs> manage to catch he anything? He caught loads. He and did, and right. actually, I don't like fish. So <laughs> I was like, oh, no. <laughs> that was a bit yeah. of a shame. Yeah. Oh, well. No, no, he was very good. But it worked as a session Brilliant. having him, because yep. I guess it's a very relaxing thing, isn't it, exactly. being out in the countryside fishing? Yeah. Uh, for people who want to get involved, whether it's with you two, if they live in the Bridgewater, Ilminster or Street, where you do your therapies, or if they want to find out more about the human givens as a whole, is there a, a, a website that you can go to? There is. There's a generic website, which is um, the Human Givens Institute website. And on there, they can find a list of therapists that's close to them if they want to actually have a therapist. But you can also find an awful lot of information on the types of mental health that we talked about, phobias, anxiety, panic attacks, everything's on there. So so, um, so that's um, all the W's, hgi.org.uk. There you go. Okay. As simple as that. That's good. And that's... As you say, finding your so local therapist That's could a generic be a good one, but they've also got lots of information and lots of free information on mental health issues and all the stuff we've talked about tonight as well. Mm. So Fantastic. Uh, and also, you mentioned it briefly, PTSD resolution. For people listening who might have um, some form of PTSD, whether it's diagnosed or not, there's, this is a free That's thing for the, that for the military yeah. and anyone affected who lives with someone who's been in the military. Yeah, okay. so it's for veterans. Well. Uh, yeah. that, that, okay, that so if you, uh, if you want to get involved with that one, um, then if you just search PTSD resolution, I'm sure you'll be able to find more about that. Thank you so much, both of you, for coming in. Really much. fascinating stuff, finding out about the human given.